Welcome everybody to my talk on using the Pluto SDR for digital television transmission. The Adam Pluto was designed for students, engineers and self-learners. Obviously radio amateurs fall into the category of self-learners. The idea of the radio was to produce something that cost less than a decent textbook according to analog devices. So um, it's not a, it's not a um, highly professional um, piece of equipment for use in networks or anything like that. It's uh, purely aimed at students. And as well as support in GNU Radio, there's also support in uh, MATLAB and uh, various other packages that people may have uh, used. Well, this is what you get for your... Um, $99. The first one I bought, uh, the exchange rate wasn't very good and I paid a bit more than uh, just over £100 for it. And the second one I bought, um, I think I paid £92. So uh, I could say they're getting cheaper. Unfortunately, they all seem to be out of stock at the moment. Anyway, I know you like to see what's inside these things. So uh, here's the uh, the top of the uh, the board. The chip, large chip to the left by the transformers is the AD9363 itself. The chip to the right of that is the Xilinx uh, Zinc 7010 which is a dual core ARM processor with FPGA fabric. Above that is memory and most of the rest of it is power supply equipment um, for the board. And the other side is not quite as uh, interesting, but uh, just out of uh, completeness sake, that's the, uh, the other side of the board. Here's a very top level overview of what you get with the Pluto. This diagram was taken from the Analog Devices website, so I'd like to thank them for it. As you can see, the grayed out component is the AD9363, which is a highly integrated transceiver. It has uh, the normal things you'd expect, power amplifier, mixers, filters, digital to A converters, filters, FIR, the filter is an analog filter and the FIR obviously is a digital filter. And on the receive side there's a low noise amplifier, a mixer, a filter, a A to D converter. Again an analog filter and an FIR filter. Outside of the integrated uh, transceiver chip is um, the uh, Xilinx code which uh, is, um, as I explained earlier, is a combination of a ARM device and FPGA logic. The FPGA logic includes um, some filters um, for uh, interpolation for very low symbol rates. It also allows for, for uh, calibration correction and uh, also handling the, the logic between uh, between the foot the um, transceiver chip and uh, the core and USB 2 obviously libio is the interface it uh, stands for uh, industrial io and uh, it's the interface that analog devices have chosen to use um, it supported it supports uh, a lot of their um, comms chips and it also supports A to D converters. It was originally designed for uh, industrial measure measurement, but they've shoehorned it into software defined radio. So that's a basic top level overview of um, of the device itself. If we um, now have a look at the um, highly integrated transceiver chip. This is in fact the AD9361, which is a, an earlier version of the chip. The AD9363 is a cut-down version, but otherwise it looks very similar to, uh, to this device, and in fact is, uh, is quite compatible. 
if you when you're looking at the software you see uh, ad 9361 all over the place um so um they're basically as far as software people are concerned they're the same chip i'll leave this up for a uh, a little while so that you can uh, have a quick look at it but it is just a standard uh, direct conversion transmitter and receiver um you've seen uh, seen it all before um i can remember doing direct conversion stuff uh, when i was a member of the gqrp club many many years ago anyway that is uh, that is a uh, an overview of the uh, the thing there's a couple of uh, additional um, DACs and ADCs on the chip, which currently are, are not uh, not being used. The uh, if we look at the the transmit side, which is obviously the bottom part in sort of a pinkish colour, the the FIR filter is uh, an interpolating filter. It also has gain, so you can uh, you can set the gain on that. And then there's a three half band interpolators that get the sample rate up to uh, 320 mega samples per second, so which the the DACs operate at. And then they're fed into uh, analog filters, which are programmable from 200 kilohertz to 56 megahertz. And then that goes into a standard um, IQ mixer, and it's driven by uh, the synthesizer which is uh, above that in the uh, in the blue blue area the output of which goes into a programmable attenuator this looks very much like the DATV Express of course we've all done it uh, using separate components we have a separate FPGA separate DAX separate mixer etc but um, we can now get it all in one chip so it's uh, shows how the uh, art is moving on I talked about calibration there are three parameters in the calibration really if we uh, go to the uh, the next uh, piece this is the maths behind it again this is taken from the analog devices website the um, you can have a, a DC offset error in the I and Q channels you can have a gain difference between the I and Q channels and you can have a phase difference between them so uh, you have to correct for all these things so that's uh, a quick overview of uh, of the hardware the uh, I basically took the DATV Express software and um, added a extra module to uh, talk to the Pluto I've actually added a hardware abstraction model so that in theory I can add as many different uh, radios as I want in the future I do intend to add the Lime SDR uh, with the help of Everest um, so um, those of you that have bought a Lime don't worry you'll be able to use the software too if you want to and of course you can always use uh, GNU radio if you're a Linux person or Nowadays, Windows is—it's uh, possible to get it to run on Windows, and that will uh, give you access to a a lot more than um, we uh, is provided by my software. You can have DVB-S two X and DVB-T two, so um, there's a uh, there's a lot more available, and you can also use it to make your own radios. But uh, GNU Radio is a is a topic for another time I think so now let's go and have a look at um, of the results of my uh, couple of weeks work that I've been doing since I got the radio it's very preliminary and it's prone to crash and uh, I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy this I've uh, <laughs> I've left all the bloopers in because uh, they're quite instructive and uh, when you see the update on the uh, on the spectrum analyzer it actually updates more rapidly than that it's uh, i think because i've chosen uh, 25 frames a second for this video it doesn't do the uh, 
doesn't do the output of the spectrum analyzer justice so uh, please bear that in mind right now I'll few, show you a few uh, features of the um, Pluto software first if we start the program you will see those bursts. Those bursts, I believe, are the uh, calibration routine uh, in the Pluto software, not, uh, not my, uh, my code. There's two stages to calibration. It first does a baseband calibration on power-up, which uh, is a once-only operation, and that calibrates all the baseband chain. And then every time you move 100 megahertz in frequency, it does an RF calibration, which calibrates the uh, RF specific parts of the system. So um, that accounts for uh, for the the bursts of um, of rubbish on the uh, on the on the transmitter. Right next, I'll um, I'll do a full span of the uh, of the spectrum the signal hound goes up to 6 gigahertz so uh, if we do a full span and then uh, if I then set the uh, DAT the uh, Pluto SDR to its uh, lowest frequency which is 48 megahertz You can see all the uh, the harmonics of the uh, of the signal, and uh, peak right forty seven point nine six. Well, that's forty eight megahertz, and uh, changing up to um, five point nine gigahertz. I'll we'll do a peak search on that. And we see it's 5.9 gigahertz. If we now go back to uh, 1.249 gigahertz. So that is the uh, the waveform QPSK DVBS. We can go to um, DVBS two. So DVBS two waveform obviously looks no different from the DVBS, and also we can do uh, DVBT. There's a DVB-T waveform. At the moment I'm having some difficulty in getting it to maintain more than um, around 4 mega symbols per second or mega samples per second across the link. The uh, analog devices claim that 
when it's doing receive only for example or transmit only it should be capable of 10 mega samples per second but uh, I have yet to achieve that if I uh, increase the um, go back to uh, DVBS let's say and then increase the uh, symbol rate to 4 mega symbols per second it's stable at 4 but if I go to say 5 you can see it's starting to drop out so uh, that is something I've got to uh, to sort out Go back to two also I'm not quite certain what to do about uh, the uh, rubbish it trans it uh, transmits when the device is reset which you see happen quite frequently because uh, I disabled that and uh, it wouldn't do a calibration routine correctly so uh, that's an issue that's a uh, single carrier I guess we could have a look at the, um, the noise on the synthesizer although bear in mind I've also got to take into account the uh, noise of the uh, signal hound but if we go to a 200 kilohertz bandwidth and uh, let's say a 1 kilohertz I'll make it 100 hertz And then put uh, a bit of averaging on. We can uh, see some of the uh, the noise, and uh, also uh, some products on the uh, spectrum, which I think may be coming from the power supply. I'm not totally certain. Um, they shouldn't uh, shouldn't really be there. Right now, let's uh, go and have a look at uh, the modulation analysis for uh, the uh, two mega symbols per second. I'll uh, we'll set that to uh, 10 megahertz and uh, get rid of the averaging and put it into uh, automatic bandwidth and go to modulation analysis. Switch the carrier off. So we've now got um, QPSK. Set the uh, symbol rate to 2000 kilosymbols. And uh, there's the, uh, the modulation analysis. Turn the gain down a bit, I'm overdriving it. So uh, we've got about 10% EVM and about a 4 degree phase error on the, uh, on the constellation. It's not quite as good as DATV Express but it's not far off.
we can also go to uh, QPSK obviously you have to change over to DVBS2 and change that to 8PSK That's about the only two modes that the uh, signal analysis software supports at the moment. Hopefully they'll add more in the future. I mean, it does do other things like QAM and, and what have you, but um, not the uh, special APSK that, uh, that the DVBS2 uses. So back to the, uh, the spectrum. Right now I can show you the difference between the bandpass filters. These bandpass filters are uh, coded in my application in C and uh, it uh, when you change the bandpass filter shape it uh, creates the coefficients and then it downloads it into the programmable filter inside the um, Pluto chip itself. So if we have a look to see what uh, what roll off we're currently using. Right, let's go to 0.35. That's the roll off that's normally used for DVBS. And uh, we can then uh, freeze that. I know what rather than we'll uh, do an average so we've got a nice nicer shape to look at so if we freeze that and then start another trace change the uh, the roll off to um, 0.25 So we can see the uh, sharper roll off. I'll freeze that one as well and do a third trace for the point two roll off. And uh, freeze that. So you can see the, the three different roll-offs to the filters. DVBS 2X actually adds even tighter roll-off filters. But uh, at the moment, um, my software doesn't support 2X. Most of the commercial receiver chips I've seen don't actually support any of the interesting 2X modes yet. They mainly support the higher constellation ones. Uh, for satellite use so they can squeeze more uh, bits into the given bandwidth. So now if I uh, disable uh, those traces Go back to uh, standard waveform, DVBS2 waveform. While I was um, experimenting with the software or experimenting with calibration routines, I uh, noticed um, something which, uh, as yet, I can't explain. But um, Rather than transmit a carrier, I uh, modified the software so that it would transmit a complex sinusoid. So theoretically you should get one um, carrier uh, appearing on the screen. But in fact, what you actually get is 
three. The uh, the one on the right, this one here, is uh, the actual complex sinusoid. The one in the middle is the uh, local oscillator leakage. And the one here, which is a mirror image through the local oscillator of the upper one, is the unwanted sideband, the suppressed sideband. Now, if you if you notice, as you change the uh, the level of the uh, of the signal, the ratio between the uh, wanted signal, the leakage, and the sideband changes. It seems that the harder you drive it, the uh, the better signal you get. I've yet to uh, to find out uh, why that is the case. I believe it's something to do with the way that the uh, calibration software, the analog devices calibration software works. I have tried setting the levels to various different things and running the calibration because uh, you can uh, bring up a um, you can bring up a console uh, if I uh, go bring up putty and then uh, SSH and type in the So I can log in as root and then the not so secret password are into the uh, the Pluto SDR and uh, we can uh, look at the processes for example standard uh, process display top but anyway as um, it's possible to uh, to actually switch the calibration on and off. I'm not actually going to do it because uh, you've. Uh, I'll have to go and look in my notes how to do it because it's not straightforward. But anyway, basically, I found that um, whatever I set the level to and ran the calibration routine, it did exactly the same thing. In that. Um, it uh, was uh, it varied with uh, with amplitude so that's all good fun this radio anyway I think I'll uh, close that uh, terminal and go to receive Still a bit of leakage leakage there, but uh, it's what got it up to full whack. About sixty dB down. I noticed earlier I was slightly overdriving the spectrum analyzer, but uh, I don't think. Uh, that matters too much. As far as demonstrating what I was uh, trying to demonstrate at the time. I don't know whether I can... No, I can't. Oh, yeah. You just see the little IF overload. Which probably means the shape that it's displaying isn't as good as it ought to be. Doesn't make much difference if you uh, reduce the level. The IF overload's gone now. Out of the box, the Pluto covers the frequency range of 325 MHz to 3.8 GHz. However, it can be fooled to operate over the range of 70 MHz to 6 GHz on receive 
and 48 megahertz to 6 gigahertz on transmit. When you plug the Pluto into your PC, it will appear as a IP address on your network. So to do to make the frequency change, you do the following: SSH to root at 192.168.2.1 it will ask you for a password the password is analog then set a couple of environmental variables the attribute name must be set to compatible and the attribute value set to AD9364 this tells the board that it's got an AD9364 on it and not an AD9363 you then do a Pluto reboot reset. The unit will then cover the entire frequency range from 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. You really need to do this if you're going to use it with the Express software because I assume that your Pluto has that full frequency range and uh, if you use a non enhanced version you'll find the software crashes because it doesn't know that uh, it can't use the lower frequencies. The Adam Pluto has a uh, output power claimed over its range of around 7 to 8 dBm. I've never managed to get more than about 0 dBm out of it but um, all the filters have got gain and you have to distribute the gain across the device otherwise you get uh, overflows in the maths and it's quite likely I haven't set all the gains correctly at the moment. The 8-fold interp interpolating filter in the FPGA fabric has got a slight amount of gain which means that the signal level coming out of the software when the times 8 interpolator is in operation has to be lower than that when it's not in operation. The interpolator is required for sample rates or symbol rates below 521 kilosamples per second. So when I'm op when it's operating in narrow band mode or reduced bandwidth TV the uh, eight times interpolator is used and uh, consequently the uh, magnitude of the symbols I send it have to be reduced as well. To simplify things at the moment I just set the symbols to a magnitude which won't overflow that interpolator. So what that means is that when uh, when the higher bandwidth modes are used i.e. 4 mega sample um, symbols per second uh, the output power isn't quite as high. Now one way of obviously of improving the output is to use an amplifier and the amplifier in the diagram or the picture is uh, the same uses the same device that uh, the uh, DATV Express uses on its output. It's in fact a GVA84 plus which is a 7 gigahertz device and um, in the 2.4 gig band has about 20 dB gain and will produce about 100 milliwatts output. So adding that to uh, the output of the Pluto will probably bring it up to a level uh, that is uh, adequate to drive amplifiers, certainly if you've used uh, DATV Express before. Obviously it's 5.8 gigs, there won't be quite as much output. The board it's mounted on came from eBay, from RF Bay, it's a general purpose uh, board for that size of chip and the GVA84 Plus is a 5 volt device so there's no need for a, uh, a resistor in the output. Uh, it just has a, an inductor in there to uh, block the uh, RF. So um, that's a, an easy way to um, to get a few milliwatts out of uh, out of the uh, the board and is in fact what I will be using. As an added bonus, the DATV Express software app also supports the FMC comms boards from um, analog devices. 
these boards plug into a Z board which is a green board on the left which has a Zinc 7020 processor on it which has considerably more FP FPGA fabric than the uh, 7010 that's on the Pluto. The other main difference with this is that uh, it supports gigabit Ethernet so there's twice the capacity. Because it they both use LibIO the interface is exactly the same so um, software that works on Pluto will also work on uh, this particular platform. The only caveat at the moment is that uh, there is no times 8 interpolator in the FPGA fabric uh, of the distribution that comes for the Z board from analog devices which means that uh, it won't operate reduced bandwidth television but having a, a higher bandwidth means that uh, it should be able to work better on the higher bit rates 8 megahertz DVB-T etc and also there's much more room for expansion so it's an added bonus something free unfortunately this costs six times the price of uh, <laughs> the Pluto so not many people will uh, will be using it well finally I thought you might like to see an actual on-air transmission from the Pluto rather than DVB-S or S2 this is in fact DVB-T I'm transmitting with a 2 megahertz bandwidth and using H.264 and HD format 920 by 1080p so hopefully this will give you a an idea of uh, what's possible there's quite a considerable lag on this signal I'm using 64 QAM and the data rate is uh, um, I'm not sure what the data rate is because the uh, that particular screen is uh, has disappeared and that concludes my talk I hope you enjoyed it